Hi guys, so today I'm coming to you with Rising Sun, but specifically the Kami Unbound expansion. I'm going to be teaching you how to incorporate this into your game, how easy it is to play. Uh, it's actually one of the easiest expansions to incorporate into a game. It has such a profound impact. We're going to take a closer look at everything that comes with it and how you play this expansion. So the Kami Unbound expansion comes with seven miniatures representing each of the Kami, or gods. Now these are, miniatures are in white, and they're really, really nice looking. Uh, I, if you may have already seen them in my unboxing for Rising Sun, where I did all of the expansions as well. But there's one for every god. They're really, really nice looking, and they're white, so they're easy to identify because they can be placed on the map. And that's going to be important to make sure that you know which ones are gods and which ones are monsters. Uh, so they didn't want to make them in the gray the same as the color of the monsters. They also come with a card for each god as well, and this card is going to talk about what this miniature actually does when it's on the board. Uh, you're not going to use all of them, though it's still going to correspond to whichever gods you have in play. Additionally, it also comes with rules, but it also comes with a mountain set of cards. Now, the mountain set of cards are going to be cards that kind of complement if you are playing with the Kami Unbound expansion, but you do not have to use uh, the Kami Unbound expansion to also still benefit from the mountain set. It just has better synergy with this particular expansion. So you can add either this or that or both or none. But uh, it's these work very, very well if you're going to use these. And we're going to take a look at how you play these and then and we'll also take a look at what the mountain cards do. So after you've dealt out the cards like you would normally at the beginning of a game and you determine which four gods you're going to have in play, if using the Kami Unbound expansion, you're going to also put the card in front of the god and put the miniature on top of the card. And you're going to repeat this for all four, and I'll do so just like this. Now, one of the things that this means is that there is additional benefits for having the most force in any particular shrine. So once we get to a Kami phase, you're still going to play mandates like you normally would. Once you get to a Kami phase, if the yellow player has the most force for Ryujin, he will immediately resolve the normal Ryujin benefit. Once that happens, as soon as that happens, he then claims this miniature and can place it anywhere on the board. Now this means an awful lot of stuff. First off, it counts as one force, so it's an extra bushi effectively, and, but it's also got special immunities. It has the same immunities that a Daimo would have, in that it cannot be killed, cannot be affected by any type of special effect. So that is very, very nice. On top of that, you also have a special ability that will be referenced on the card. Now we're gonna look at all of the different card abilities, but it's important to know that you don't put a ring on these figures. They go on just like they are, and you take the card and you put it by your play area. So if I'm the yellow player, I'm gonna pull this by me, and that's how we know that this particular god belongs to me. Uh, I, and I have played this. You can still put a ring on them if you have them, but some of their bases don't actually correspond to rings. So I like to put maybe an extra large ring around it just so we know. makes it a little bit easier because if your minis are unpainted, some of them might look a little bit similar, especially when the board gets cluttered. But it's up to you. You don't have to put a ring on them. They are meant to stand out, and that's why they're white plastic. Uh, so they basically can be placed anywhere on the map. You don't have to have a stronghold or anybody there. You place them wherever you want. They count as one force for you, so this could help potentially be a tiebreaker. But what's important to know is that they only belong to you for as long as you have the most force here. So even in the middle of a battle, let's say, for example, let's say that the yellow player had top honor uh, and the purple player had second place. So the yellow player would win Ryujin. Well, let's say in the first battle that Ryujin is involved in, between these two clans, the purple player decides to gain some honor doing seppuku. They will immediately break the tie, and then Ryujin will immediately switch sides and join their team instead. So the alliances definitely shift based on worship. Let's take a closer look at what these miniatures actually do. And now we're going to look at these minis. I also want to point out that each Kami phase, they can change, and each Kami phase you also get to place them. So if you wanted to potentially place somebody uh, over here, uh, and then the next Kami phase you wanted to place them over here, you could do that as well. So uh, Sukiyomi, for example, here is, uh, has a special ability that says, before resolving war in this province, all players with force in it gain four money. Now, uh, you know, definitely 
war is not you know a great time to be gaining money because you're going to have to spend a lot of money in war so that is a very nice province and being able to place him maybe you want to place him specifically in a, in a zone where your ally is so you can make sure that your enemies don't get extra money next up is amaratsu amaratsu here amaratsu says the figures of the player with the highest honor in this province can't be killed by other players. Now this is huge. This means they can't be killed for any reason. There are certain monsters in the game that will kill somebody right away at the start of battle. Uh, of course, you could lose your battle and potentially be killed that way. So Amaratsu is very, very nice. However, there are certain times where you do want a figure to get killed by another player. There are certain monsters like the Phoenix that give you victory points when they are killed. Um, although it doesn't stop you from committing seppuku, so Amaratsu is basically saves all your guys life uh, even if you're going to lose the battle. Very strong. Ryujin. Ryujin is here. Ryujin counts as one force for each different type of season card his controller has. So Ryujin can potentially be stronger and stronger the more different types of season cards you buy. Uh, so in the first turn he'll probably just be maybe strength one if you bought something, uh, but he'll get stronger and stronger each season. Next up is Susanu. I'm going to move some of these down here a little bit. There we go. Susanu. Non-Kami figures can't move out of this province. So he is actually more effective before battle because he'll just count as his one force. They all count as one force. Um, at least one, sometimes more. But Susanu is going to stop all their non-Kami figures from moving out of the province. So this is really helpful during the actual, you know, whenever somebody wants to play a marshal and move all of their figures. You can put, put him down and stop, especially if somebody's built up everything in one province and you know they're going to spread out before the war phase. Next up we have Hachiman. Hachiman is, uh, he says, in this province, Ronin tokens count as two force each. Also, you're going to notice that their, their special abilities tend to synergize with what they actually give you because Hachiman gives you two Ronin tokens. And so if you have you know, been with Hachiman the whole time and you're gaining Ronin from him, then putting him down, he's going to uh, make you really strong. It's also important to know that the, these uh, special effects tend to affect all players uh, in many circumstances. So if you happen to be, you know, maybe you have four Ronin for Hachiman, but you have an opponent who's been harvesting and has more Ronin than you do, he could actually hurt you. So the, uh, the guns kind of don't discriminate here. Let's slide these down a little bit more. We've got two more. We've got Rajin. Rajin is very nice. Rajin says, only Bushi and Kami figures count their force in this province. Rajin is insane. And here is the mini for Rajin. Uh, so basically, Rajin, I think, is one of my favorites. Only Bushi and Kami. So Bushi are your basic foot soldiers. So he completely, when he's placed somewhere, he completely nullifies the force of all those other figures. Your, if you have Shinto in the province, they'll nullify their, they don't add their force. Ronin cannot add their force as well, which is particularly harmful <laughs> because Rajin is almost a direct counter to Hachiman in that case. But also monsters don't count. So let's say your opponent, you know, drops Daikaiju, counting as five force. Well, you know, if Rajin is there, Daikaiju is not going to be able to add his force. So that's particularly nasty, especially if you are somebody who has extra ways to get Bushi out onto the board. It makes your Bushi count as a lot because they're the only things that will count in that province. And next is Fujin. Fujin is uh, double the harvest rewards in this province. Winning this war province token also grants its harvest reward. So now this one, there was some confusion on this one the first time I played. Um, this is Fujin. Now, Fujin doubles the harvest rewards for all players. So if he, he, you put him down somewhere and then surprise, surprise, somebody is able to trump you and then harvest, then they're going to get the double rewards. So that's unfortunate. Um, but the other thing is when you win the war province and you gain the harvest reward for him, you're not gaining double the harvest reward. You're just gaining the regular harvest reward. So he's all about harvesting. Um, great for you know any any clan that's going to try to really control a couple of provinces, especially the the really nice ones like maybe Kyoto, for example, for its four victory points. Really cool deity.
The next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the mountain cards that come in here that you can add to your game, because every game you're going to pick one type of card and add those. So if you decide to go with the mountain cards, there's some really interesting cards in here. So first off, we have Piety. If you win a War Province token with a Shinto, gain honor and three victory points. Now this is pretty significant. Uh, it only costs one, but normally people don't have Shinto on the board. They normally have them up praying. So this represents an alternative. If people are really in contention for these for these kami, you might just say, you know what? Forget about the kami. I am instead going to just populate the board and try to win and gain victory points that way. And it actually comes with two versions of that. Uh, Path of the Builder is a particularly nice one. When any player plays a martial mandate, you may build a stronghold, paying its cost. So this is um, this is a really nice one that means you won't have to worry about martial, which especially if you want to be able to get extra strongholds down, and it, it kind of combos well with piety. And then you've got Path of the Kanushi. Uh, during a martial mandate, you may move one of your Shinto to a different shrine. So this is different than those two. Um, well, I mean, Path of the Builder is good for anybody because if you're trying to get gods, you need these strongholds out so you can deploy your Shinto, and you want to be able to deploy multiple uh, during any particular you know, uh, phase where you're getting your troops out. So Path of the Kanushi allows you to potentially move your Shinto, faking somebody out. Somebody might have to go all in on, on Amaratsu to try to gain that, and you're like, oh, okay, well now I'm going to move my guys over. This is very strong. Very cool. And those are just the spring cards. So now let's look at the summer cards. Uh, the summer cards are particularly cool as well. We have a virtue here called Sincerity, gain honor and an additional victory point whenever you take a hostage. Okay. We have two of those. We also have Path of the Favored. This is a Shinto upgrade. Your Shinto count is three-fourths in the provinces where you have the highest honor. So this is a really nice one, especially if you're going to get the earlier piety, because now your Shinto are going to uh, give you honor. And they're, so you're going to be gaining honor. You're more likely to have the highest honor, and you're going to be gaining victory points. And this is just going to combo very well with that. We have Path of Sengoku. This is a Daimo upgrade. Uh, and at the end of any harvest mandate, gain the reward of your Daimos province if you haven't already. This is nice, and I believe this would also stack with any monster that counts as a Daimo. Uh, and then the, the monsters aren't unique to this because the there are no monsters that came with this expansion, so they just threw some monsters in here, the Oni of Blood. Uh, Onis are generally give you a benefit if you have the lowest, uh, the, the lowest honor. All right, and now we're gonna look at the autumn cards. We have Form of the Tanuki. Mario would be happy because this lets him fly, right? Uh, at the end of the game, it's a winter upgrade. You gain two victory points for each different type of season card you have, and I believe they're talking about like winter upgrades or war upgrades, things like that. And we have two of those. Way of the Kiri. At the start of war phase, kill up to two Bushu, I'm sorry, Bushi or Shinto in the Daimos province and gain three victory points for each. So you can gain six victory points at the start of each war phase. Uh, but it's again, this is a autumn upgrade. So again, it's not going to do that great, but these combo very well if you have uh, something else that's counting as a, a Daimo as well. But you don't want to lose your Daimo if you're going after these Daimo upgrades. And then we have the Oni of Hate and Oni of Spite. That you might have found in other sets as well. Um, and the Onis always want you to have lower force. Lower lower honor, rather, not lower force. They get empowered. And then you can steal victory points from everybody with higher honor than you. Uh, that's funny. So the Kami Unbound expansion for Rising Sun is extremely easy to add to your game. And it adds a ton of potential and it adds a lot more fight for the Kami. So if you notice that your games are too easily allowing players to ignore the Kami. This is a great expansion to add. Uh, it just It's really fun. Plus, you get great looking miniatures. You get a nice extra set of cards. Uh, and you have these awesome cards with these really, really powerful Kami. I'm really, really liking this expansion. And I think it's one of those that I would want to use with most games, but not necessarily every game. But there are certain ones that come out that just really make certain factions work well with them. Uh, so I like having the option to just kind of random it, and then you have four you know, really new powerful minis that are going to be in this game. Really complements the game in a great way, I think. If you like this video, guys, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like. Uh, I am running another round of the giveaway right now, so if you would like to win an expansion of your choice in the form of a $20 Cool Stuff gift card, the only thing you need to do to enter that is to be a subscriber 
and leave a comment on this or one of my other videos. It's as simple as that, guys. So uh, sign up for that. Click the bell for alerts so you don't miss when I announce a winner or whenever I have new videos come out. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like Rising Sun, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and have a great day.